My name is Bill Getty. I'm the Sanctuary Director of the Joppa Flats Education Center in Newburyport and the uh, Rough Meadows Wildlife Sanctuary in Raleigh. And I work for the Massachusetts Audubon Society and have been working for them for 18 years. The Massachusetts Audubon Society is the largest conservation organization in New England, and one of their major goals is to preserve open space for uh, endangered species, for connecting uh, habitats together so that animals have uh, uh, opportunities to move from one area to another. And when property came available along Patmos Road in Raleigh for a sanctuary, Mass Audubon became very, very much interested. It's such a beautiful property because it includes both upland forest, a lot of oak trees, and sassafras and those type of trees, hickories. Uh, it has fields and also the most important for us is the salt marshes. So we had this opportunity to purchase this land but of course we had to do fundraising for it and we worked with the state government, uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, foundations and uh, happily with the town of Raleigh and the town of Raleigh provided $250,000 of, of money to help us purchase this land from their uh, Community Preservation Act funds. So it became part of the Massachusetts Audubon Society, and that is basically we were looking for property that would be open space for people to walk and enjoy the outdoors, uh, places to preserve for wildlife, and also as a venue for our educational programs. It became obvious to us almost immediately that we couldn't do a trail system, a, a meaningful trail system, without crossing land owned by the Essex County Greenbelt. The Essex County Greenbelt is a great conservation partner to Mass Audubon, and they own land in the same area that we were purchasing land. So we developed a collaborative effort between Mass Audubon and the Essex County Greenbelt to develop a trail system that crossed not only our land, but also their land. And we have since been managing the, um, the sanctuary as a joint effort between our two uh, conservation organizations. Um, Brent Bazelak, who is the conservation agent, was very helpful in terms of working with us to, to determine where the best passage for the trail was so that we weren't going into any fragile areas and where we wanted to open a, um, a couple of viewpoints because the marsh is such an incredibly beautiful place. Uh, he worked with us to make sure that we were only cutting trees of a certain diameter and we were opening up an area where it wouldn't cause any erosion because everybody was working towards the same goal, which was how do we make this sanctuary the very best uh, visitor experience for people when they come. There had been some existing buildings on the site. Um, those, those had been taken down, uh, but we still needed to replant the area because, uh, we, of course, we didn't want any erosion, uh, any of the soils washing into the salt marsh. So we uh, planted um, a meadow mix of seeds so that we would grow fields in the area. And just recently, last fall, we planted over 200 plants. These were uh, flowering crabs and dogwoods and uh, trees, flowering trees that would uh, attract birds so that these not only for the pollen and the insects in the spring, but also for the fruit in the fall. We have three major habitat types. And of course, then you also have the intersections between the habitat types. But because we have grasslands and the maritime forest and the salt marshes, we have a wide variety of different birds. So when you go to the uh, grasslands, you're going to be expecting red-winged blackbirds and red-tailed hawks. In the uh, forest, along the forest edges, you're expecting Baltimore Orioles, Orchard Orioles, Warbling Vireos, things of that nature. And of course, if you walk down the trail uh, out to uh, one of our viewpoints, you expect to see uh, birds of the salt marsh. So in the springtime, uh, you would see snowy egret and great egret. And in the fall, you have these passage migrants, these birds like greater and lesser yellow legs and black-bellied plovers. Birds that have nested in the far north, in far northern Canada, are now migrating back to our area during the fall. So we have these throughout the seasons. It is just a beautiful place with a great variety of birds. And we have a, a large number of people coming to visit our sanctuary uh, for the birding opportunities there. Uh, they're osprey, these the birds that feed primarily on fish. They nest in the area. That's a bird that you would expect to see uh, in the upland portion of the sanctuary. Again, Baltimore Orioles, wood warblers, yellow warblers, and things of that nature. When we get towards the summertime, um, it, it's not as active, except that the, uh, the egrets and the herons are still around. Um, and we also will have some ducks, black ducks and mallards will be available. And you should be able to, as you're walking out near the salt marsh, here are the calls of the willets. They actually say their names when they're calling. So that is a, 
a, a really exciting bird to see. They don't look like much when they're sitting on the marsh themselves, but when they take off, they have these big stripes of white in the wings and in their tail. And in the fall, as the foliage begins to turn beautiful, the marsh also turns from green to a golden, golden brown. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's a, a plant called salicornia. A lot of local folks call it pickleweed uh, because they used to use it, put it in their salads, uh, and they like croutons. But they turn what we, I call them uh, like the Fruit Loops uh, plant because they turn these yellows and purples and orange like the, like the breakfast cereal that kids like. And, and so it's such a beautiful place. Place to, to walk. And then in the winter time, um, a lot of folks don't venture out in the winter or don't think there's much to see, but it's really beautiful. We have things like short-eared owls, uh, rough-legged hawks, an occasional bald eagle. We have an observation platform there that we use for our school programs. P folks are welcome to use that. But it's, a, again, a beautiful place where it's very quiet. On most days, you can't hear the traffic on nearby Route 1A. Uh, and it's a, a wonderful place to come and, and contemplate nature, uh, relax, re renew yourself, and have a wonderful time out in the natural world. I'm Bill Getty. I'm the Sanctuary Director of the Joppa Platts Education Center in Newburyport. We're located at 1 Plum Island Turnpike. That's the highway that leads from downtown Newburyport out to Plum Island and the Parker River National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, we do a tremendous number of programs for participants of all ages. Um, major focus of Joppa Flats as the gateway to the Great Marsh is the vast number of birding programs we do. Some, one of the most popular ones we do is Wednesday morning birding. That's every Wednesday, except in July, every Wednesday from 9.30 to 12.30. And uh, the river side of our building is a beautiful view of the Plum Island Estuary, the lower part of the Merrimack River. You can reach us at our website, www.massaudubon.org slash Joppa Flats, that's J-O-P-P-A Flats, F-L-A-T-S, or by calling us at 978-462-9998. Thank you.